In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, 
and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. If you are able to, please stand for our next carol.
please take your seats as we listen to the second reading. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room at the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a saviour who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them and about his child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. If you're able to, please stand for the next carol.
after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. If you're able to, please rise for the next carol. The stars are bright. 
Please do take your seats. Welcome everybody, welcome to our carol service. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Andy Southey. I am part of the staff team here at Heart Church. Who enjoyed the Christmas spectacular last week? Can we just show our appreciation for all the teams working to make that happen? Absolutely brilliant. What a day. What a day for us. Record amount of people here in this building for that. Absolutely fantastic. By a show of hands, who has finished their Christmas shopping? All done? All, wow, all done, all wrapped? S- semi, okay. That kind of wrapping. We understand, we understand. Who's not bought a thing yet? Are you out there? Not, wow. Not, come on, just one more time. Not bought a thing yet. Just show me where you're at. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. What's your name? <laughs> Maria. Maria, not bought a thing. There's still time. You're in control. Come on, I love that. I love that confidence. She says, Andy, I am in control. It's okay. I'm just letting you know. Week tomorrow, it's coming. Don't leave it all to the last minute. There's still a little bit of time. Um, In these next few moments, we are going to be continuing this series that we've been on as a church, really building up to the, the birth of Jesus, but also... Maybe you're here for the first time uh, and you, or you've missed one of the messages. Just don't worry. This message will make a sense as a standalone message as well. But just to recap, Mark Ritchie kicked us off and he talked about the promise. And she ho- he showed how Jesus came as a fulfillment of God's promises throughout the Old Testament. And then Joel talked about the scandal. And he talked about the scandal that an unknowable God would make himself knowable. And today, we are going to be focusing on the shepherds and the kings. The shepherds and the kings. And I love it that the Christmas story focuses our attention on the fact that God is on his way. God is on his way to humanity. And then we read in the scriptures, and we heard it today, that Mary and Joseph are on their way to Bethlehem. And it just got me thinking, it got me thinking about those scenarios When someone's coming over to your house and they say, I'm on my way, I'm on my way. And in the room today, there's a group of people that when they message you and say they're on the way, it's really simple. What that means is they're on the way. And then there's a group of people in the room today who when they text you and say, I'm coming, I'm on my way, that means they just got out of bed, okay? (laughs) Don't look at them if they're near you, don't look at them. We don't want to make this awkward, but... I'm on my way. But these people, some of them have this amazing skill that you're like, they said they're on their way, but but where are they? What's going on? And they turn up and you open the door and there they are with the festive chocolates, just handing them over just to sweeten the moment. That would be great for you because you could just wrap them up. Gift one done, straight under the tree. That would help some people, some people today. But then, I don't know if you, and I don't want to push any buttons today, but... I've had it in this Christmas period where I've had a message saying that my parcel is on its way. And then I get a message and I say, it's been delivered. Which, going back a few years, that would be amazing. Right now, I know I'm, I'm about to enter a roller coaster of a journey. I get home and I think, okay, my parcel's been delivered. I open my front door and it's, it's not in the house. So I go to the first neighbour my favourite neighbour, the one I trust with the parcels that I've put down, give it to them. And I knock on their door and they say, sorry, I've got nothing. And then I think, oh goodness, it's not going to be with the other neighbour, is it? So I go over to the other neighbour and I ask them, nothing. Where is my parcel? So you start having a little bit of a look around and then you see it. You find your little card, which again used to be really helpful, but now it's just like being handed a treasure map by the postman going, go on then. (laughs) Find it. Find it. So then... You've got your delivery slip, you've got your treasure map, and this is what you see on it. Package inside the bush. My email said that's delivered. That's not delivered. I've got to, I've got to climb up a small tree to get to that one. Package delivered. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Or maybe you discover, maybe it's, it looks a little bit more like this. Under bucket by car. <laughs> They're not wrong. 
I don't think it's quite the idea, though, yeah? I think people might spot that one there a little bit. Or maybe, maybe it gets worse. Maybe you discover something a little bit like this. Parcel was handed to a receptionist, signed by Wheelie Bin. I mean, I don't know what kind of wheelie bins you've got where you are, but my wheelie bin so far has never been called a receptionist and has never signed for, never signed for a package. It's on its way, they say. You know, some people, this is, this is your excuse now. Like, you're like, oh, I'm that person who's always running late. You're thinking, great, I can just add in there, just retrieving package from the pond. I'll be right with you. I am on my way. But Mary and Joseph, they are... They're on their way, and they're on the way to Bethlehem. We're just going to recap that scripture now, where it says about Jesus being born. Luke 2, verses 6 to 7, it says this. While they were there, the time came for Jesus to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. They make this journey. They're on their way. And then, wow, here wrapped up in these cloths, in this moment, a saviour for all of humanity. Of all the places where this package could be delivered, I think this is probably the most outlandish of all of them. Here, Jesus wrapped up in a manger. And then, as we read the scripture, I don't know if you felt it earlier, but suddenly we move to a new scene. We're in this incredible moment where God himself is wrapped up and put in this manger. What a moment. And then the camera pans to some shepherds in a field. If you're watching this in a movie, you're immediately thinking, what's going on? I've just seen the saviour of the world arrive and now I'm looking at some shepherds. But maybe you think, oh, it's just scene setting. Maybe these are some extras in this story. Maybe it's going to move on to a different moment. Here we have these shepherds, but the camera is still on the shepherds. It stays in this moment. Why are we seeing these shepherds? But then the scene explodes, doesn't it? And the angel appears in this moment to the shepherds. And what I'm expecting to see is the angel arrive... Look at the shepherds and say, I'm lost. I'm definitely lost because I don't think you're the people that I'm meant to be coming to. But that's not what happens, is it? The angel arrives and starts to say, I'm bringing you good news. This news is for you. Now I start to think about that moment where the angels are in heaven and they're being told, you are about to go with the message that God himself has been born. And they're like, wow. This is, a, this is like top level mission situation and we are going to carry the message. Yes. <gasps> Where are we going? Are we just going to tell the whole world? Are we just going to do loops around it and tell everyone? Are we going to go to some of the biggest leaders, some of the biggest rulers amongst the place? Uh, yeah, so here's the thing. Yeah, you're going to Go to some shepherds, some, some, I don't follow. Of all the people that they could be going to, they're going to go to some shepherds. And the scripture says that the angel goes to the shepherds and they're frightened. And it says in Luke 2 verses 10, it says, the angel says, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be the sign to you that you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Wow. Wow. Not to religious people, but to shepherds. Not to leaders, but to shepherds. Bottom of the pile, this is so unexpected you know I think about the king's coronation and all the fanfare for the king I'm thinking about that kind of moment but these are the people who are brought in 
And the angel goes to the shepherds and says, yeah, you, come, come. But I love that the shepherds are chosen. In all that Luke could have highlighted in this account, he wants us to know that the shepherds were the ones invited to Jesus. That right at the beginning of Jesus' time here on this earth, his intentions are already unfolding. That no matter our story, no matter the mistakes that we've made, no matter whether we'd count ourselves somebody who would be included by Jesus or not, here in this scripture, the message is being communicated. You're in. You are in. And here the shepherds, they're they're given this message. They're given this message. Now, we're getting messages all the time. Maybe you send your messages by iMessage. Maybe you you, you're on Android and you use SMS. We don't judge you. Come on, no, it's Christmas. We both must be kind. Maybe you are sending your messages using Facebook Messenger. We do judge you. <laughs> we don't really. My friend Tamsin here, she sends me messages by sticky notes. Anybody else still sending messages by? Fantastic, we'll talk to you afterwards. That's absolutely fine. But we're getting messages all the time and... If life's busy, sometimes you might not even remember the message you sent in the morning. But then there's those messages, isn't there? There's those messages that come in and they capture your attention. Ping, you got the job. I got the all clear. I'm on my way. I found my ring. I don't know what that message is, but sometimes we get those messages that grab our attention. And this message that the shepherds receive is one that would grab your attention like no other. It's unlike anything we've ever seen before. And the shepherds, they come, they, they hear this message. And it invites a response of them, a response of the shepherds. Are you going to come and see? Are you going to discount yourselves because you're just shepherds? Or are you going to take the invitation and come and see? You know, when that message comes, you can just swipe it to one side, can't you? I don't know. Maybe for you, when you're hearing this message, to come and see Jesus this Christmas, you're tempted just to, in all the busyness, just swipe it aside. But here we have these shepherds and they don't. They take the response and in Luke 2 verse 16, it says that they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. They're invited to come. Not just hear a message about Jesus. Maybe they could have left it there, the shepherds. Wow, we met an angel today. That's pretty amazing. We got the message. Wow, they could have left it there. And you know, so can we. So can we. We can leave it at the point where we hear the message about Jesus. But what actually is incredible about this story is what happens next. The moment these shepherds come and they meet with Jesus. Maybe for you this Christmas, maybe it's time not just to hear a message about him, but to come and meet him for yourself. Jesus, he came on a rescue mission. He came on a rescue mission for you and for me. And maybe you feel like there's a list of reasons why you'd want to swipe it away this Christmas. Maybe you can think of so many reasons that you wouldn't be accepted by Jesus. But those are the reasons I want to say that he came for. Those are the reasons that he came for. And some of the shepherds in Bethlehem would have actually have been raising sheep to go into the temple, to be slaughtered, to be the sacrifice for people's sin. Some of the shepherds in this area in Bethlehem, they were raising sheep for that purpose. And what a powerful thought that here lying in the manger is Jesus, one who would be raised, one who would grow up to be the sacrifice for all sin. Here we have these shepherds who may have even been raising sheep for this reason, we don't know. They're coming and they're seeing the one who would be sacrificed for all of humanity. And you know, Christmas is 
this time where people are often given gifts, aren't we? You will be when you get there. But most of us, we're going to be kind of buying the gifts and we're going to be exchanging gifts. But our story then, we're steering our focus towards three of the most famous gifts that are ever delivered. And these are delivered by, by the kings. So our journey zooms out of Bethlehem and the camera pans across east to what most likely would have been area of Persia or modern day Iran. And earlier we read in Matthew's account, didn't we, of, of who he calls the Magi, traditionally referred to as the kings and the wise men. Our attention then comes to these men. And it says in Matthew 2 verses 1 to 2, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. So the shepherds got the message through the angel. And for the kings, they are getting the message through a star. A star that would be a sign. You know, these men are clearly aware of the prophecies around the Messiah and clearly have a strong interest in stars too. And this star was was a sign for them. It was a message for them to follow. It pointed them to Jesus. No doubt they'd been looking out for it. And I don't know, just I got thinking maybe they'd had a few red herrings along the way. For these men who have been looking out for this star, maybe they had a few occasions where they were looking out for a star and they were saying, is it this one? Is it, do we follow this? Is, ah, no, 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 no. It's not that one false alarm it's a it's a red herring but maybe we can reflect on this for a moment you know I don't know about you but it would be true of me in times in life we can find ourselves following things that end up being a bit of a a red herring you know life happens doesn't it we hit challenges and we can find ourselves along the wrong pathways we can find ourselves pursuing things that ah, it's not It's not actually that one. We can find ourselves pursuing the wrong things. But something special happened for these kings that day. Because this wasn't a red heron. This was the real thing. This would be the moment that they would make a eight to nine hundred mile journey to meet with Jesus. And I don't know your story. I don't know what your journey's been like. But maybe you feel like you've been seeing some red herrings. Maybe you feel like you've, you've been making some long journeys here, there, and everywhere. And maybe you're feeling a bit weary. But this Christmas, could it be that in this moment, you would see the sign? You'd see the sign and you'd meet with Jesus. And the scripture goes on, and Herod, who has been made king of the Jews by the Romans, heard this news and naturally it drew his attention and so he sent the kings to find this child and it says in Matthew 2 10 to 11 that when they saw the star they were overjoyed on coming to the house they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and they worshipped him and they opened up their treasures and presented it to him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh And in an effort to simplify the story, I don't want to shatter the dream, but in our nativity, we often see the shepherds arrive and then the kings arrive. In reality, that would have happened much, much later. It's also assumed that there were three kings that came, but actually there were three gifts. So there's an assumption there that there were three kings, but we don't really know. But what we do know is that the kings followed the star. The kings followed the star, they took the sign, and they found themselves in a powerful moment. A powerful moment in the presence of Jesus. These kings, they'd made the journey to come and to worship Jesus. So first, we have the shepherds. These nobodies who are included in this moment. And then we have the kings. We have these 
Gentiles, which is a name given to non-Jewish people, being led to Jesus. This is a monumental moment for humanity. The saviour of the world has been born and who's got an invite but the lowly shepherds and the Gentile kings being led to meet with Jesus. I love this. I love that Jesus' mission is made clear in this moment. And then later in his ministry that he didn't just come for the Jews, but he came for the entire world. That Jesus, he came for you and for me. If you look at the scenes that are painted with these visitors here, the shepherds and the kings, if it makes you think, oh, this is a little bit unusual, why would they be included? Maybe we can pause. I've certainly asked the question, why would I be included? Andy Southey, with all his mess and all his mistakes, why would he be included? But I love that included at the start of Jesus' life is this picture that can speak to us today. A powerful picture that says, there's a place here for you. Wherever you find yourself, whatever you think of yourself, there's a place here in the presence of Jesus for you. And I love that Matthew chose to include this account of the kings. Could have just left it at the shepherds. But he chose in his account to include the kings. And again, he draws our our attention to the unfolding story. Unfolding story that outsiders would find their place with Jesus. The kings, wow. The shepherds and the kings, the average and the outsiders, the unlikely and the unexpected, the lowly and the wealthy. These accounts are meant to catch our attention. These, this unexpected arrival of Jesus and the unexpected guests, really an unlikely gathering, a message for humanity to say, you are welcome. Come as you are. Come as you are. And in the fun and the traditions and the great moments that are going to surround us this Christmas, can I encourage us, may we not miss the message of love at the center of it all. In all the fun, in all the joy, may we not be distracted from the message that sits right in the middle of this story. Jesus came because of love for you and for me. Maybe today's your angel moment. That moment where you go, the good news for me? This message is for me? But I'm just, I'm just little old me. I'm an outsider. Maybe this Christmas you're going to have that kind of angel moment. Maybe this is it here today or maybe you feel like the king's following the star and you've been on a journey you've been on a bit of a journey but you found yourself finally here today in this moment seeing this sign that is for you and for me it's because of love that Jesus came it's because of love that Jesus came to one day die on a cross and to pay the price for my mess, for my sin, for your mess, for your sin, so that we could be forgiven, so that we could have relationship with God. And I just, I think it'd be great if we just have a little bit of a moment here. Maybe we can bow our heads and close our eyes. I don't know, maybe you're here today and You'd say, ah, I'm a Christian. But you know what? In the busyness of it all, I've forgotten the message right at the middle of his love for me. Maybe in this moment, you just want to have a moment and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you included 
the shepherds and the kings, and therefore you, you included me. Maybe you're here today and you'd say, Andy, I'm not in right relationship with God. Maybe you've, you've lost your way. Maybe you'd like to receive the forgiveness and grace that Jesus has for you today. To put your hope in him, to put your faith in Jesus, to receive a fresh start. Maybe that's for the first time or maybe you want to recommit your life to God today. If either of those are you and you're saying, yeah, I want to respond to this message today. This is a message for me. I see the sign, I see the angel, I see the star. There's a message for me to come to Jesus this Christmas for the first time or to recommit your life. I would love to lead you in a prayer of inviting Jesus into your heart. That this wouldn't just be a message this Christmas you hear about, but a message you respond to. I'm going to lead, if that's you, I'm going to lead you in a prayer of knowing Jesus. Maybe maybe every single one of us here today, we could say this out loud together after me. But if you're praying this prayer for the first time or to recommit your life to Jesus, you pray it like it's just you and Jesus in the room today. Pray this after me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins and rising again to bring me new life. I'm sorry for my sin and my mess. I receive your forgiveness and your grace. Today, I choose to follow you as my Lord and Saviour. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Amen. And with heads bowed and eyes closed, if you prayed that prayer today, If you prayed that for the first time or to recommit your life to Jesus, I'm going to count to three and just ask that you be really brave and just put your hand up in the air. Someone's then going to put a book in your hand. That's our gift to you that's going to help you on your next steps on your journey. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or to recommit your life to Jesus, after three, just shoot your hand up. One, two, three. Right now, just put your hand in the air. Just put your hand in the air right now. Wherever you are, just shoot your hand up. That's great. That's great. Brilliant. Be brave. Be brave. Hands going up. Yeah, just keep your hand up just a little bit longer just so our team can see that and they can get to you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, just keep your hand up just a few more moments. Brilliant. That's great people responding just down here as well fantastic a few more moments if that's you you responded today just raise your hand right up in the air so our team can see we'll get one of those books to you we'd love to give you that gift today brilliant that's fantastic hey we can we can all look up It's absolutely amazing seeing people responding to Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate together. I'm right in the middle of it all, right in the middle of all the excitement for every single one of us this Christmas. An opportunity to pause and to see the message that God has for each of us. With His love, and his acceptance. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Andy. We really appreciate that. And what a great reminder for us as well. Just want to take a moment to speak to some of the people who have responded this morning. If you have been given a book in your hand, if you've been given one of these books, then we would love to connect with you afterwards. We want to be able to just uh, chat with you and help you if you have any questions or if you would like somebody to pray with you, then we would really love to take that opportunity. So if you could come over to this corner of our uh, studio, we have a team there ready to speak with you. Uh, Bring the person that you came with. Uh, Don't feel you have to come on your own. That would be great if you wanted to do that. 
If you have to rush off, then on our website, on our, if you go to heart.church forward slash response, there's also a, a form you can fill in there and our team will get in touch with you. And if you... Um, not sure and you didn't raise your hand but you want to find out you want to think about it you want to find out a bit more about God then also we have some of these books that we would love to give you so if you would like one of these books this book explains a bit about what Andy was talking about about why Christ came at Christmas time and what that means for us here in 2023 if you would like one of these then you are more than welcome to you please just ask you can get one of those we've now got opportunity to bring our tithes and our offerings uh, this morning And I love what Andy shared with us, but I also love the carol that we sang, Oh Holy Night, Night Divine. And I just had a moment on that front row there, just thinking about, gosh, you know, it was a really holy night. Jesus, Son of God, came to our earth. What a holy, holy uh, evening that was. What a divine opportunity we have of bringing our worship to him this morning. And then, as Andy's referred to, there's also that carol, isn't there, where we sing, you know, if I was a shepherd, I would bring a lamb, and then we'd do the bit about the wise man, they would do their part, yet what can I give him? So this morning, we've had opportunity to give our heart, to bring ourselves as an offering to God, but also out of our worship to him, we can honour God by bringing our, our tithe, some of our finances, and our offering to him, as a way of saying, we are grateful for your love towards us, and we are grateful that in you, we have everything we need. So we want to take a moment to bring our tithes and our offerings. And also last week, if you were here for the Christmas Spectacular, you know that we've uh, got a Christmas from the Heart offering that's going to two great charities. You'd have heard about those last week, but we're supporting this year Justice and Care and Refugee Reaps. And the opportunity to give to that is still open if you didn't have time or, or haven't heard about that until just now. So the ways to give are going to come up on the screen behind me and everything that's given this morning will be taken as tithes and offering unless you specify it's from the heart offering. So there's ways to give. You can go to the buckets at the back. There's contactless giving. There's um, a QR code. You can give through Church Suite. Um, If you're giving online, there's a drop down menu you can select uh, from the heart offering if that's what you're bringing this morning. But let's just take a moment to, to give to God. Great. You can also, there's uh, buckets on the way out as well if you haven't had opportunity to give yet this morning. I'm just going to pray over our offering. Father, thank you that you've given us everything. Father, thank you that we've taken a moment to think of the holy night, the night divine where you came to this earth and chose to live like we have lived so that you would then would suffer and die to so that we would know eternity with you so we could know you here in our lives today we could know your peace and so father i pray you'll accept our offering to you this morning as a way of worshiping you and saying we love you and we adore you amen amen well we're going to have our final carol in a moment but before that i have got a few notices for us to to have So are we ready to hear a few details? So next week, it's Christmas Eve. Next Sunday, it's Christmas Eve. And we're meeting here at Kings Meadow Campus at 10.30. Do come along. We're going to have a family service. The children are going to be in with us. We've got a few fun things um, on the the go for that next Sunday. So do come with your family and, and worship together with us. And then the following Sunday is New Year's Eve. And so on that Sunday, we are meeting online. So we're going to have an online service on the 31st of December. So on that week, I'll see you in the chat. Um, And you you can still be in your PJs if you want to. But do meet with us together. We can meet online together. 
And then in January, so January the 2nd, 3rd and 4th, do you remember it's part of our pattern as Heart Church to start the year by praying and fasting together. So the 2nd, 3rd and 4th of January, it's in the fast lane. And we have online prayer at 7 a.m. in the morning and the meeting together at our city site on those evenings at 7 p.m. to pray together. They're going to be great. Uh, We'd love to see you involved in those. And then in January, I hope I'm being supported by a slide here. In January, for those of us at Heart Church, we know that from time to time, we can't use this venue and we have to go to Albert Hall. And so we are here on the 7th of January. Then we're at Albert Hall for a couple of weeks. We will, all of that information is on our website. It's on our events page, uh, the coming up section of our website. Thank you, Eddie and Sade. There you go. If you need to take a photo of that, so you'll, you'll be up to date. But we'll keep you up to date with all of those. We just wanted it to get in your head so that you can remember that so who's ready to sing our last carol if I if I can invite you if you're able to why not stand with me and we're going to sing our last carol together and worship God thank you worship team Christmas. We look forward to seeing you in the new year and the rest of us, I look forward to seeing us next week. God bless.